of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, you sent your Son to be born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us who were under the law. Grant that through faith we might rejoice in our baptism, for we are adopted as your children and connected to Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the seventh chapter of Daniel. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. We join in the psalm. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. The epistle is from the fourth chapter of Galatians. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Alleluia. We stand for the hymn for the gospel.
Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the next hymn. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary has had her child. The angels have made their announcements and sang their song. The shepherds have paid their visit and made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And my guess is that most of you when you hear that story read from Luke chapter 2 or read it, let's face it, you hear it in the voice of Linus. There's no other voice 
that quite captures the mood of that verse or that passage. It's how most of us think of Christmas. Christmas Eve, at least the early evening service, that's the big service. That's the nostalgic one that really tugs at our hearts. Perhaps a few non-members wander in to try to get a glimpse of the reason for the season. And we should take that. We should welcome such visits and encourage these people. Pray for them. Because everyone needs to know the story of Jesus' birth and the gift of God that was given to us so that we can have forgiveness and peace with God through him. But now that we have heard the facts of the birth in Bethlehem, it's good that we then turn to John so he can tell us a little bit more about who this child is and what God is really up to through this baby. Yes, Jesus has a birthday. While I've had some incredibly annoying arguments with people on whether December 25th is his real birthday, and by the, re by the way, there is a very solid reason why the church long, long ago decided on the 25th, and it has absolutely nothing to do with any kind of pagan holidays. That's a discussion for another time and place. While I've had arguments with people on exactly when Jesus was born, I think we can all agree, whatever day it was, Jesus did have a birthday. But in another sense, Jesus does not have a birthday. John begins his gospel, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That firstborn child of Mary is God. Everything you can say about God, you can also say about Jesus. The word was and is God. John continues, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So for example, we read in Genesis, we read, God said, let there be whatever. What you're actually hearing, you're hearing the second person of the Trinity. Everything that exists, exists because of and through Jesus. And there's more. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. Jesus gave life to Adam and soon thereafter gave life to Eve. And then there's what Hebrews tells us, which is the appointed reading for Christmas Day, the epistle reading. And it says that Jesus upholds all things by the word of his power. The very fact that this creation exists and that you and I continue to live in this creation is because Jesus makes it so. Everything that you can say about God, you can say about Jesus. Because Jesus is God. And this God became one of us. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Why? Well, he did so because you and I, since we were conceived, we really wanted to be God. On his first attempt, the devil came at Adam and Eve with his best stuff. The serpent said to Eve, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And Eve said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. To which the serpent responded, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Don't you really 
want to be God? Don't you want to make all of the rules? Don't you want to make, call all of the shots? Don't you want everyone to respect you and follow your lead? Wouldn't the world be a better place if you were in charge? I read a story recently about some college chaplains who were having lunch together when another professor joined them for casual conversation. Eventually, the professor asked this question, why hurricanes? And after a moment of silence, one of the chaplains said to him, well, you're going to have to ask the science department. But the professor had posed the question to these chaplains, not the scientists. Of course, there was something implied in that question. Why does God allow such terrible disasters? And that is a question the science department cannot answer. So one of the chaplains said, I can offer a theological answer to that question, which of course is what the professor wanted. The chaplain said, as a biblical literalist, my understanding of how the trouble began was that our original parents told God, I don't need you telling me what to do. I want to be my own God, so scram. And God's response was, in effect, you want to be God? Fine, go ahead. See how well you can manage this world on your own. Hurricanes are just one example of what, of how, that we make really lousy gods. And the professor responded, but aren't we given responsibility to care for this world? Well, yes, the chaplain said, but the plan was for us to be managers under God's authority, not as independent agents. We do make lousy gods. Anger, hatred, and the fights that result from all of that, illness and injury, a fallen creation that includes hurricanes, wars, rumors of wars, and death. That is what happens when we try to be God. Satan and his angels had the same idea. They weren't content to serve God and enjoy his love, no, being God was much too appealing. Peter tells us how God dealt with them. God did not spare his, the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And that could easily have been us. But God's love was such that he did not, could not stand the thought of doing to us what he had in store for those fallen angels. Therefore, God became one of us, a human being. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word became flesh to do what the rest of us human beings have failed to do. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, before we were even born, that was a hopeless cause. Jesus, because he took on our flesh and blood, was subject to the law and kept every syllable of that law for us. The wages of sin is death. Well, we've more than earned those wages. And while God, being spirit, cannot die, the Word became flesh in order to die the death that we deserved. And that same flesh rose from the dead to prove Jesus' statement to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Je Jesus being born in Bethlehem 
means what John says it means. Of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Jesus coming into this world delivers far more grace than we can ever hope to understand. In the next chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus changes water into wine. It was the best wine, and far more wine than those wedding guests could ever hope to consume. A year before he went to the cross, Jesus fed those 5,000 out in the wilderness with far more food than their stomachs could handle. And these miracles give us just the faintest idea of what it means, grace upon grace. Jesus' grace is extravagant to the point of being wasteful. Jesus' grace extended to a person who thought of herself as unforgivable. That Samaritan woman at the well, that five-time loser at marriage. That grace also revealed itself in healings. The healing of a 30-plus year cripple, a man born blind, a man who had been dead for four days. And Jesus wants you to enjoy that same extravagant grace. A few days before he went to the cross, Jesus said, I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. And you are included in that word, all. He wants to give you more forgiveness, more blessing, more joy, more grace upon grace. It's all undeserved. It's yours anyway. That's why Jesus was born. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now receive the offering. We stand, we confess together the second article of the, of the creed, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. All the ends of the earth will see your salvation. Lift up our hearts to hope and joy in the celebration of our Savior's birth, that we would manifest this joy in witness to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have comforted your people and bared your holy arm for our salvation. Preserve those threatened by persecution for the sake of Christ. Grant courage, comfort, and peace to those who suffer danger or violence. Lord, in your mercy, look on the nations of this world. Give them a spirit of peace so that conflicts would cease and reveal through the birth of Jesus your great salvation. Lord, in your mercy, you rule over all things in heaven and on earth until that day when your Son comes in glory to usher in his kingdom. Give wisdom and insight to all leaders that they may live peaceable lives. Lord, in your mercy, you led your holy apostles to ordain ministers for the proclamation of your word and the faithful administration of the sacraments of Christ. Grant the guidance of the Holy Spirit to Reverend Geldner as he considers the call to Trinity. Direct and guide the members of Trinity in peace by your Holy Spirit as they continue to deliberate the future, that their discussions and decisions will accomplish those things that will benefit your church and glorify your name. Lord, in your mercy, your Son has commanded us to teach all nations. We pray that you will grant your blessing on Fairbow Lutheran School, students, teachers, staff, and parents. Prosper their efforts to guide our youth into the paths of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, mercifully grant healing, relief, comfort, and peace to all the sick, to those who suffer, to the dying, and to those who grieve, especially Amy, Andrew, Barb, Chuck, Dave, Diane, Diane B., Donna, Glenn, Gloria, Lee, Lorraine, Lowell, Marilyn, Mertice, Ray, Scott, Sherry, Verna, and all whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, the great love that laid your son in a manger also lays his flesh and blood before us in bread and wine. Grant us grace to bow our hearts before him with all those in heaven and on earth who adore him that we may receive his forgiveness and life with repentance and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, in the birth of your son, you have called people from every time and place into his body, the church. We give you thanks for the believers who went before us, especially who were with us at, in Christmas's past and who now live with you. Grant us sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life and bring us with them at last into your presence through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the next verse of of the Father's love begotten. We stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for, th- for through the sending of your Son Jesus Christ, you have given us the right to become your children and are now heirs of all that Jesus has won for us in his birth, life, death, and resurrection. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end, Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Welcome to the Lord's table. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
you stand? May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the, salu through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this meal and in faith toward you and in love for one another. Help us to serve you in honor and love all our days. We pray for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As the light of these candles illumine our faces, it symbolizes the light of Christ, a child in the manger at Bethlehem, a savior suffering our death on the cross and soon to come from his throne on high as judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light which, who enlightens heaven where there is no need of candle or sun. Rejoice for the light of the world has come, the light who transforms us with the brightness of his glory.
Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the final stanza of Love the Father's Love Begotten. Thank you.